What's going on guys? We've got a slightly different video today. I'm doing a gym vlog where it's the first proper leg session since I tore my quadriceps about a year ago. So it's gonna be very interesting. I'm sure it's gonna be very humbling as well because I'm not gonna be lifting any significantly heavy weight. So if that's what you're after, this video isn't gonna have any of that. But in the meantime, it'll be good to see where I'm at and this will serve as a benchmark and a starting point for my progress over the year. Yo! So guys, we are on our way to the gym in peak hour traffic. This workout is gonna be very interesting. I don't know exactly how it's gonna feel. I have done isolated periods of leg exercise. So what I mean is I have done some leg exercises over the past year, but I haven't really done that many dedicated leg workouts that weren't rehab based. And this is the first one where I'm treating it. Well, I might as well go. This is the first one where I'm treating it like a strength session rather than a rehab session. That's why it's technically the first leg workout, not just rehab. And it's gonna be interesting to see how my legs feel from a side to side difference, left versus right, because my right leg was the one that was injured. Uh, in a couple days time, we're gonna be exactly one year post injury, exactly one year. So it was the 10th, I think, of January last year. And it's the, no, it's the 10th today. It's a year exactly. So it's fitting that we're doing a leg workout on the one year anniversary. But what I want to say is that even though it's been a year, my leg hasn't fully recovered. So even today, I ran up the stairs at home. The fact that I can run up the stairs is a positive, but I can still feel a power difference from my left leg to my right leg. I also feel that power difference when I'm boxing, especially on when I transition my weight by pushing my right leg into the ground, it feels like there's still a little bit missing. And now, and here's the thing, I realize it'll never feel exactly the same. It will never feel exactly how it did because the muscle is physically shorter. Like it's now attaching about five centimeters higher up my leg. And then there's just a big sheath of tendon there. But I'll show you guys in the gym when we get there. So that's the worst thing is that I know it'll never feel the same, but not feeling the same doesn't mean it won't be as strong one day. It can still feel a little bit different, but there will come a day where even though it feels different, it's just as strong as before. That's the goal. I don't know when I'll get there. I don't know how long it'll take. I don't know how many workouts it's gonna take, and I don't know how fast or slow the progress is going to be, but that doesn't matter because all of that will be revealed to me in time. What I can do is just go and do the workouts. And I think that's something that I've often overlooked. I don't know about you guys, but I've often overlooked the simplicity of execution. Whenever I'm setting targets, setting goals, I get wrapped up in the analysis and you know if I do this exactly in this way six months from now, it's not important to talk about exactly how I'm going to do something six months from now. Let's, let's rephrase that. It's not as important as doing what I have to do today. And so what I have to do today is simply go to the gym and do a leg workout. So I'm gonna get a lot of information. I'm gonna find out how strong I am. I'm not gonna push the failure, but I'll find out how strong I am from how it feels during the workout. How heavy does this feel to me? How heavy does a 50 kilo squat feel? How heavy does a 60 kilo squat feel? I may not even get there. I might not even be able to squat my body weight for reps today. I don't think I have squatted my body weight at all, not even for one rep. Some guy is creeping into my lane. I haven't even squatted my body weight for one rep since the injury. All my attempts at squatting have been significantly lighter. I do think the heaviest I've squatted is 50 kilos for reps. So I'll probably do that again today. I might push it a little bit harder. I have a training partner there, a friend of mine, and he'll spot me if needed. So that's the first thing I wanna see. How strong am I going to be numbers wise? The second thing will be, how is it gonna feel on the isolation exercises? Because I'm planning on doing some leg extensions where it's just quadriceps. And so I don't know, I might get a good pump. It might be a little bit painful. If it is painful, obviously I'm gonna stop. It might feel a little bit tight mobility wise, which is normal and to be expected after you know an injury like this because for the physiotherapists out there or people with some physiotherapy knowledge or sports background according to the current grading system of injuries it used to be three grades when i started my physiotherapy degree it was three grades of injury where one was a slight tear two was a significant tear and three was a complete rupture now they've changed it to four i don't know why i'll find out when i go back to finish my masters of physiotherapy but i was diagnosed with a grade four quadriceps tear of the rectus femoris which is a complete rupture now i think on the mri it did show a little 
little strand of muscle that was still hanging on. But honestly, from how my quadriceps, how the muscle gathers up halfway up my thigh now, I don't even think that is there anymore. Like that must have ruptured at some point later or after the MRI because it's completely all, like gathering all the way up. It doesn't look like there's a bit of muscle that's still attached in the original position at all. As far as running is concerned, it hasn't really affected me now, uh, although it's just a lack of power. I can probably run 90% of my previous top speed. So when I was playing football, my top speed was measured GPS uh, at 34 kilometers an hour, 34.01, which it's not slow by any means. It's not English Premier League quick, but for most leagues around the world, outside of the top leagues, it's pretty quick. And the quickest that I have been clocked at since in my running functional rehab sessions, which is with a track and field group, is 30 kilometers an hour, or 30, 31, I think. And that's just about 90% of my previous top speed. It feels like 100% now in terms of how fast my legs can push, like how much force I can produce. It feels like 100%, but in terms of absolute numbers, it's 90%. So I'm gonna probably cut this down quite significantly. So anyway, we're just arriving at the gym and I will see you guys inside. All right, guys, so workout was a relative success. Uh, we ran out of time at the end to do some hamstring curls. I didn't want to bombard you guys too much with footage of every single set. And because the gym was very busy, it would have been very obstructive to other members for us to you know, do an excessive amount of filming. So, because we went during peak hour, which is like right after work in the early evening. And as someone who's been on the other side of it, someone who's just working out in the gym, having people trying to move around and film film is a little bit obstructive to everybody and at the same time whilst you do what you got to do right we still filmed it's also important i think to just be mindful of everybody and there's nothing there's nothing worse than having to navigate someone's tripod and camera and yeah i've seen all sorts of stuff but at the end of the day we did what we had to do got some footage of the exercises they felt okay that's my general assessment they felt okay i felt a side to side difference especially in the leg extension I've got some footage of what each leg looks like so you guys can see exactly what a one year post quadriceps tear looks like. To be honest, it was most obvious on the leg extension. It was most obvious on the leg extension, especially at the start of each rep. Now, for my anatomy bros and physiotherapists, you'll know that the specific muscle that I injured, the rectus femoris, activates more so in the flexed position of the knee when the knee is bent. So from the bent knee position, when you try and straighten your knee and straighten your leg, that's the start of the leg extension exercise. And it's also the start of the swing phase where you kick a ball. So from the knee being fully bent, straightening out. That's when the rectus femoris is used the most compared to the other muscles. And that was the biggest position of weakness that I felt on that side versus the other. My left side, which is the non-injured side, felt twice as strong in just at that starting position. In the middle to the end range of the leg extension, like where the knee's basically almost straight to fully straight, it felt pretty similar, one leg to the other. As far as the squats went, it was probably a less of a difference, but still, I could still feel something. And that was basically where I felt it. When we did the seated calf raises with the dumbbell on top, uh, the dumbbell on top of the knee, I did feel some discomfort. But that was because the physical dumbbell was pressing down on the site of the injury. So whether there's some scar tissue there, whether it's just not a smart position to put a dumbbell, I don't know. I had to readjust it a little bit, maybe shift it to the side so it wasn't directly on the site of injury. Even though it's been a year, it's still a little bit sensitive. So the seated calf raise exercise may look strange to people who haven't seen it before. I find it really beneficial. And part of the reason I do it is obviously, apart from calf strengthening, is because I think it helps with managing my tendonitis in my Achilles. So I have Achilles tendonitis in both legs, which I've battled on and off with since the first year of playing uh, football full-time, which was 2016. And yeah, like I said, it's been on and off and whether or not it's debilitating depends on one, how well I recover, two, how well I manage my training load in the first place, three, how well I manage my calf mobility because when the calf is tight, it pulls on the tendon because they're both attached. It's like a pulley, right? You want the tendon to be stiff 
stiff and strong and able to bounce and have elasticity, but you want the calf muscle belly to be soft and pliable so that it has some room to contract. I'm gonna leave you guys again because I'm gonna order some food, which is healthier than usual because I need to stop being a fat fuck. So today's dinner is chicken and rice, and I would tell you guys where it's from, but I'm not into giving any free plugs or shout outs. And so speaking of plugs, today's video is sponsored by Box Rope, which is the world's best skipping rope. Whether you are a boxer or not, if you just want a interesting way to lose weight, get fitter and burn calories, or if you are a boxer and you need a rope for your skipping training, then I highly recommend you pick up a box rope. So I've got a link down below in the description. You can use code many to get 10% off at checkout. Anyway, also, I think the bottom line for why today's session was a win is that I didn't get injured. I didn't irritate the quadriceps injury any more than I wanted to. Obviously, you need to irritate it just a little bit to get some growth and to get some adaptation. And that's what I think we did. And also somewhat irrelevant to the quad, we did Romanian deadlifts and hip thrusts. I will put the actual session layout on screen for you guys now. I'll write down the actual layout of the session and put it on screen for you guys now so you can have a look at it. We were supposed to do hamstring curls as well, but because we ran out of time, we didn't get to do it. That's just the way it goes sometimes. Life is busy and it's not the end of the world if you miss three sets of hamstring curls. If you miss three sets of hamstring curls every session for a year, then it's a problem. But in a one-off session, it's not so much. And that being said, we got some good hamstring activation, I think, from the Romanian deadlifts. I think it felt good. There was a little bit of instability, I think. Like, I felt a little bit like my balance was off. I may have also done an extra rep by mistake in the set that we filmed and the sun was in my eyes, but anyway. The hip thrusts actually felt great. The gym has a dedicated hip thrust machine with a belt that goes across your waist instead of a bar. Back when I was playing football at the peak of my strength levels, I did a, I think, 200 kilo hip thrust for reps. I had some days where I did more than that for like three rep max and stuff, but at the end of the day, we did 60 kilos today. It felt hard enough. I wasn't trying to break any strength records like I told you guys at the start of the video. I'm just happy with the starting point that we're at, and I think it's a good base to build from. I really hope this video entertained you guys. I really hope you got something out of it. As always, hit the like button, subscribe, follow me on Instagram, click the link down below if you want to book a one-on-one -on -one call with me as well. It's the best way to get my undivided attention. But if not, guys, I'll catch you in the next one.